would be brilliant if we could have something to transport food around. And we picked this up. But they do say, obviously, never trust a bull. So, you can never be trusted. everyone welcome back to the farm so today it is Wednesday later on in the week and we've got the sugar beet which is being loaded finally and uh, you can see it over there so there you go it's a Komatsu loading up the elevator there look at that and it's going all the way down to Barry St Edmunds because the sugar beet factory has had a problem uh, at Cantley one of their furnaces has blown up uh, so it's having to go all the way down to Barry St Edmunds to obviously be made into sugar, which is a long old pool. So, there we go. What a beast. in the yard now. We've been getting some bales in here. Picked them up with the Manitou yesterday because we took the front loader off for the tractor run. I was carting some muck back on Monday at the start of the week and it was so wet that uh, I couldn't really do any more muck carting because the tractor was just sinking into the ground. So I managed to get the deer in the end, the small deer toy, and we're gonna strap that on later on in the week and then clean this tractor off and get it ready for the tractor run because at the moment the ground is just too wet to be able to do anything on. So I won't be able to cart any muck until after until probably until after Christmas now because it looks like we've got a lot of rain forecast. And by the silo I cleared out some indoor bales, brought them out with the loader this morning because we're getting an, an area ready for some indoor calves, lambing and also a calving area for the cattle as well. So this was barley straw which was baled up with the Massey Ferguson tractor and baler if you remember back earlier on, the, on in the summer and it's just being stored here because we're going to use it from the outside yard and we need a bit more room inside. Right, so I'm sure you'll probably know, I spend a lot of time carting uh, buckets around the yard by hand uh, and the other day Dad was looking in the farmer's guide and he saw this feed trolley because I said to him a while ago, I said oh, it would be brilliant if we could have something to transport food around and we picked this up. It's a really old feed trolley and we just put it underneath the Collins and Silo this morning, earlier on, mixed in some rolled barley from the shed which we milled up the other day. Now we've got like a nice barley cross with rearers nuts mix in there and it is absolutely fantastic. It is a real game changer. You used to have to carry 16 buckets around by hand a day. Now we can take the trolley around and then fill up a bucket. About 20 years ago when we first came to this farm we did used to have a feed trolley and it did look very similar to this one we've got here which we picked up the other day and uh, it was sadly sold like 15 years ago it was sold and it went to a farmer down the road and we believe this is our old feed trolley because it's everything about it is identical uh, to how I remember growing up except we've got on this side now a handle on the end and it's been fabricated and welded on and it makes such a big difference when you're feeding the cows feeding the, and the calves as well every morning and evening rather than going to the feed hopper then go and get in the buckets I can just fill this up and then start filling the buckets up near the cattle near the calves it's uh, a real game changer So 
I've got one bucket filled up. I normally put that on the side. And once I'm in with the calves, I can grab it from inside the pen, which works out quite nicely. Come on, hop up, hop up, get up. In part of this old shed, we, we're still trying to replace the lights. We've got some LED ones on order, and the electrician's supposed to the electrician's supposed to be coming round to put the new lights in soon, so we'll be able to see better. For now, I use the six hours lights. Just put them on, leave them on the ignition for five minutes. Whilst we do this lot as well. So we're getting a few more cars. 29 this year. Then we've got the suck the cows to look after. They have ad lib nuts and then they have ad lib straw as well, barley straw off the farm. And once they get older, they'll go and join the big shed. And then uh, next summer, they'll be going out to graze uh, over down at the Broads. So, isn't that right? Hmm? Yes. Right, off we go again. We've got a few bales which we're storing in this shed at the moment as well near the calves. There's about 85 here and it's all barley straw. So we're going to use it as feed straw later on for next year. Uh, it's kind of like, a, it's a bit of a reserve really in case we uh, get into trouble and we need some extra straw. As you can see, this is our bull Hector. You haven't seen him in a while. And uh, we've been bedding him up with some of the other cattle today, scraping out as usual. He's a big old boy. You're native Angus, aren't you, Hector? You're a native Angus. And I'm hoping in the next, oh, you're having a yawn. <laughs> I'm hoping in the next couple of years, we are gonna get you some nice native Angus heifers. At the moment, we've got red poles. We're about to have some of our first calves. So it's really important to check the cattle at night. We've got about 20 new heifers in, to, in this year's herd as well. So we've got a lot of first timers, which we're a bit worried about. However, you're supposed to be an easy carving bull. So that might make a big difference. So uh, we have built a good bond, Hector and I. He's probably one of the bulls I get on with the most. Um, but they do say, obviously, never trust a bull. So you can never be trusted. He always just wants food, to be honest. Don't you? Yeah, yeah, he's always after food. Anyway, there's a lot of ladies in there who are about to have all your babies. Alright, well, we're getting some silage. Remember, there's no feeder better, so you still have to feed them all by hand, but dear Santa, dear Santa, maybe. We'll see what Santa brings next, huh? We'll see what, see what Santa looks like. Literally, in a couple of weeks, we're going to be carving, carving will start. And uh, we're, some of our sheds are quite old, but we need to upgrade the lighting, as you can probably tell. Um, we have asked the electrician, and maybe I'll speak to Tall and Light, who uh, gave us some lights for the 6R, if we can get some LEDs, which will help us with our visibility at night. My, one of my favourite heifers. So you're a first-timer. You're going to be having a calf this year, you are, from Hector. Your boyfriend. She did have an affair with Rodney, actually. <laughs> Didn't you? One of our blond, blonde bulls. Yeah, you're all right, aren't you? You do love your food, don't you, Panda? She wants nuts, that's what she wants. Well, we're in the truck now, and I'm, I'm just gonna go and we've got, got some trouble. The holiday makers need some kindling for their uh, fire. Always something going on this time of the year. Someone in trouble, give me a ring. They need help of something. As you would have seen in the sheds, we do need to improve our lighting. I'll speak to Charlie, our electrician, about that and see where we're at. And uh, with that, I'll give this video a thumbs up. After this, I'm gonna go and check on the sugar beet pile and I'll give you an update yeah, with that and how much sugar beet uh, ended up going to the factory. So with that, keep liking, keep subscribing, all that good stuff, and I'll catch you in the next one. Click here to subscribe to the channel, and click here to watch another Ollie's Farm video. Mm.